Hello and welcome to Climb Ministries F260 Bible Plan. I'm Pastor Boyles. Good to be with you here as we are on day number two of our plan. Yesterday we had the opportunity to take a look at chapters one and two of Genesis. And today you were to read chapters three and four. So Travis and Jack and Dale, I, I hope that you're enjoying the reading and I look forward to reading your comments in the journals. And for others of you, if you desire to, to be a part of this program, let me give you a little insight on how to join. One, one thing that I want you to know is for Replicate Ministries, if you go there on, on the web for Replicate Ministries, or if you go to the iTunes store or the Google app, you download the Replicate app. That's HTTPS, uh, and then it's replicateapp.com. If you go there, uh, you can sign in, and what I want you to do is, once you've done that, is to contact me by sending an email message saying, I would like to be a part of this program, and you can send that to climbrev, C-L-I-M-B-R-E-V, at gmail.com. And once we have that, I'll send you an invitation, uh, not only to be a part of Climb Ministries on Faith Life, but also to be... Uh, added to the Replicate app for the Bicota group, which is Ephesians 4.32, be ye kind one to another. And once you've done that, then you're going to be able to journal just like all of us. And what we're doing is, as you read, you make your thoughts and your comments in your journals. I'm going to be journaling, and I'm going to be placing my comments there as well. And I also have the opportunity to comment on, on your takes. And then in the Faith Lab, app from 8 to 8.30, Monday through Friday, 8 to 8.30 p.m. I'm going to be on my computer in case you have questions or other things that you want to discuss on chat, and I'll get back with you and we can work through that. Because the whole idea of this F260 Bible plan is for us to be able to grow disciples using God's Word. So that's a little bit of the introduction. I know it took a little bit longer. I'm not going to be doing that all the time because you can just rerun the first and second videos. But uh, we want to get into looking at our readings for today and, and give you a chance also because I didn't comment a whole lot on uh, readings for chapters one and two as it was mostly our introductory video. But So I'm going to do that right now. If you just opened up Genesis, Genesis is the very first book of the Bible. The word Genesis really comes from the Hebrew word reshith, which actually means in the beginning. So there you have it. Very much in the beginning, we were reading about the fact that in, um, God being introduced to us as, as sovereign. And what we find in the, in the narrative is that God's account of creation in chapters 1 and 2, he brings into existence the world. And that word create tells you that it was formed out of nothing. So that's the interesting thing that we, we learn from our, our first analysis. And then the other thing that we learn uh, from the beginning is that the Hebrew word for God, Elohim, is a plural. And so we're introduced to the fact that we're talking about the plurality of God. And that's very important. So you see that one one establishment that we have from looking at Genesis and first opening it up is that it's going to be about God and the world that he created and that God is sovereign and king over all the world. That's going to run through about chapters 1 through 11. So we have a little ways to go. And then from chapters 12 to 50, we're going to look at God's relationship with Noah and the covenants that are made with a select group of people. But for now, we just want you to look at the fact that here in the beginning as you're studying Genesis, understand that it's important, just as Jesus looked to the Old Testament, it allows us to understand how the Bible turns us towards looking at Jesus and then, of course, the New Testament would have us looking back at the cross and recognizing that the entire Bible is all about Jesus Christ, even though not every particular story is significant in, in 
telling you about Jesus specifically. It's the lead up. It's how and the reason why God gave his son. And we find that out very early in Genesis. First, everything that God created, he said in those seven days was good. The establishment of good is that God is good. That is the root of all goodness in the world. And God didn't want to make it a situation where mankind was a robot or an autotron. He put within the garden, uh, therefore, everyone, the tree of knowledge of good and evil and the tree of life. And interesting, if, if you look at the, the first man, his name was Adam. And that, that stands for, in the Hebrew, that's humanity. You see, it's God's relationship with humanity, the whole purpose of humanity, God's creation for his purpose. And then Eve, which is in the Hebrew means life. So God has created humanity to be alive and living, but not like the animals. He gave us something different that set us apart from the animals. As we look at the scriptures in Genesis 1 and 2, we see that one of the things that mankind has to determine is whether or not they want to ultimately be obedient to God after all, God is good. Everything he's created is good. Or is humanity going to want to decide what is good for themselves? Do we really believe in God, you and me? Do we really believe in God as sovereign? Do we believe that Jesus Christ is Lord? You see, Adam and Eve were faced with that very same situation from the beginning when they were created created by God and given this great garden out of darkness came light and, and then there was the garden of Eden and everything was perfect then comes Satan the serpent and the serpent provides temptation to to Eve saying look at how beautiful this tree is. It's, you won't die. Eve looks at the tree and sees that it's, it's good to eat. And so she partakes and she gives it to Adam. Now, I want to point out some things for those of you that are studying and trying to discern. Well, what, what all can we glean from this? A lot of people will say, well, see, woman was the first one to sin. But I believe there's more here than that. You see, God created man first. He gave man a responsibility. He gave man a responsibility to, to oversee and to look after the garden and to look after Eve. Eve was to be the helpmate, but it was Adam who was created first that he might protect and take care of Eve, make sure that she doesn't stumble and fall. And I think as disciples, we have to understand that we have that promise as well that we need to look to, to be able to look for our brothers and make sure that they don't stumble and fall. And in our households to, to care for our wives and to make sure that they don't stumble. And when we're absent, as we're absent as fathers and grandfathers and, you know, from our responsibilities, then that's where temptation can come in. You see, Adam wasn't there to say, no, no, we're not allowed to, to have that. Now, he wasn't far away, but he didn't step up. He didn't be the man, if you will. And so Eve sinned, and Adam went right along with it. And from that beginning, everything was changed. It was interesting. I heard uh, just this past week an interesting story about 
the fact that, you know, when God came into the garden and, and Adam and Eve, they hid themselves and, they, and, and God asked why they were hiding and they were afraid. Why were they afraid? Because they were naked. Someone, someone kind of asked, uh, what does that tell us about an age of accountability for, for children? You, you, and, and one of the answers was this. I believe the age of accountability is someone like when a child recognizes that it's not good to be running around naked. When they recognize within their own body that it needs to be covered. And I heard the, the chaplain that was sharing this message saying how his one young, youngster, if, if they didn't tell him to put his clothes on or whatever, and they just gave him liberty, he would run all the way down the street without his clothes on, without a second thought. But when we finally discover that being naked is wrong in the presence of others and we need to cover up we've reached the age of accountability i i'm not saying that that's correct but it's not it's an interesting idea uh to be certain because here in the bible we find out that one of the things that happened was that they they recognized that they were naked where before there was no problem being naked in chapters 3 and 4, if we just move along, because I don't want to take too long, I would rather respond to some of your journals and some of your other writings and respond to those and, and do that on the chat line, and that's going to come up in just a little bit. But God gave the opportunity for Adam and Eve to, to be fruitful and to, to multiply. And so that's... Humanity was to, to be the, the, the very reflection of the image of God. That was the way in which Adam and Eve were created. And later on in the New Testament, we read that we, we are to be a reflection of his image. Once Adam and Eve were told to be fruitful and multiply, they, they had children. And in chapters 3 and 4, we read about the fact that there was... In chapters 3 and 4, the sin that befell Adam and Eve. But rather than be a reflection of the image of God, it seems like mankind has often resembled something far from it. As a result of the introduction of sin, as we found in chapter 3 of Genesis, with the introduction of sin and Adam and Eve, we find in, in chapter 4 a broken relationship that exists between brothers. It's a situation in which we, we discover between Cain and Abel that brings about the conflict between brothers. And that will be repeated later on in scriptures, we'll find, as is in the case between Jacob and Esau. But most of you, if you've read it, you already know that there, there's the situation where uh, Cain uh, brings uh, a plant offering. Abel brings uh, a meat offering. And the scripture is really unclear as to why one would be accepted over the other. In fact, both are offerings that we read about later that are presented to God. So as always, it seems that we can surmise that one of the situations that existed had to be one of sincerity of the heart. Was there a true desire to please God or, were, or was Cain really just going through the motions? And I think sometimes we can ask ourselves that. Are we doing things just really to please God uh, with sincerity or just to say that we've done it? What does our presence really mean? What do our offerings really mean? Even today, we, we say that God loves a cheerful giver. We want you to give from the heart. I think, think back of a story that uh, my father talked about, uh, and I've used it often, when we collect offerings. And that is back in the day when uh, 10 or $20 would have been just a great deal of money. 
a man often gave $10 every, every week when he went to church. Him and his wife would go, they'd sit in the pew, and when the offering was taken, he would pull out a 10 and, and drop it in the offering plate. Well, as it turned out, one Sunday, when the offering came, by, he reached into his billfold and noticed he only had a 20. Well, you can't take change from the offering plate, so he dropped it in there and kind of gave his wife a smile. Afterwards, he said to his wife, he says, did you see what I did? I, I gave 20 today. And his wife said, yes, but God only counted it as 10. It seems it wasn't really a cheerful gift after all. But not only do we have the story between Cain uh, slaying Abel, uh, but then we begin to see how uh, the punishments are and, and what, what takes place. God says that whoever kills Cain will be avenged. There we see the introduction of God's mercy. God desires all of us to have a repentative heart. Talks about then uh, what ensued afterwards in the relationship with Cain and that uh, Adam and Eve once again had, had another child. And that pretty much, uh, in a way, surmises uh, chapter 4 because... When we get into chapter 5 and Genesis chapter 5, we're going to begin uh, to move from the narrative of one major character in Adam to that of Noah, which uh, I alluded to earlier. But I want to thank you for listening uh, to our uh, program today, and I hope you'll continue, and I, I look forward to reading your journals. But thanks. We'll see you again tomorrow.